Hello everyone, my name is Vasco A. Conan. I'm a nurse and uh, I'm uh, the head for the Endless Success Tutorial. And uh, here we have today a fresh new edition of the Endless Success Tutorial. Today we'll look at the EKG, the electrocardiogram or the echocardiogram. This EKG or ECG as you may call it, is a cardiac test that shows uh, the impulse transmission along the cardiac pathway so um we discuss the transmission normal ekg pattern the ekg wavelength the segments and the boxes and the equivalents in configuration or in numbers so we'll look at those segments as we go along but let's start with the normal ekg uh, pattern now the ekg as you see here this is a normal ekg pattern it has wave that travel from one point to another point so from this point to this point is just one cardiac beat. Now in this cardiac beat, we have up here the P wave. We have down here the Q, over the R and the S. So this is called the Q R S complex. Now we have right here is the T wave. So now in every cardiac cycle, that is when the heart beats locked up. That's one cardiac cycle. When the heart beats once, the heart has pumped blood from the red chamber or the red atrium to the left ventricle and to systemic circulation. That's how the heart works. So every heartbeat represents a cardiac cycle. Now, every cardiac cycle should have one P wave and one KRS complex. So this completes a cardiac cycle. Now, in understanding the EKG, now, when you see the cardiac cycle, let's take for example, this is, the, this is the human heart right here. So this is our heart right here. Our heart has chambers. It has valve in our heart. Now, this is normal heart. Now, this normal heart, pay key attention here. Um, this normal heart has what we call up here, two veins. They are called the vena cavus. The superior and the inferior vena cavus. Now, <clears throat> then uh, we have down here is the biggest blood vessel, which is called the aorta. And we have one down here. This connect to the pulmonary, um, the pulmonary vein that goes to the lungs and get oxygen and uh, come back to let out the heart. Now, in the heart. We have segments in this in the chamber of the heart. You have the SA knot. Now the SA knot within here, it is the cardiac pacemaker. It's what we call the natural pacemaker. This SA knot is situated somewhere right up here in the chamber of the atria. So you have the SA knot right here. Now the SA knot is the first portion of the heart that receive the blood and one blood enter this red atrium up here we do, so this this become the red atrium um now this red atrium here can you just uh zoom in a little bit now this red atrium here above it is the sa node right here now this sa node whenever blood starts to enter the heart what happens the sa node signal the body that blood is entering the heart so this will produce the first firing of the of the impulses. We so this is called the natural pacemaker, the SA node. Now, when when the blood enters the first part of the heart, which is the red atrium, it passes through a valve here called the tricuspid valve to the red ventricle. So this becomes the red ventricle. Now, another another impulse stimulant is around here, and we call it the AV node. So the AV node is right here. So you have two nodes. This is number one, the SA node. This is number two right here, the AV node. So this will fire what we call the impulses or electrical, the electrical current of the heart. This signal. So when this happens, this will give the heart the contractive power to contract and relax this valve for blood to flow through. Now, this SA node gives rise to the AV node. The AV node fires and then it goes along the way. Now, the SA node and the AV node they are formed within the atrial wall of the heart. 
Now we have two more. Those two more, we, they are found somewhere around here, and they are called. You have the um, bundle of hairs. It's called the bundles of hairs, and you have the pukonji fibers. Now the pukonji fibers and the bundle of hairs, they are they are also the pathway through which these impulses follow to flow through the heart. Now, the reason I brought this analysis, I want to just make a little uh, quick analysis here. Now, where you see the P wave, the P wave of the heart represents what we call the atria of the heart. So the P wave is the atria of the heart. And where's the atria of the heart? The heart has two atria, the right and left atria. It has red and left ventricle. Now, this part of the heart, the P wave, represents the both left and red atrium. So, any problem that affects the red and left atrium, we'll see that will be shown within the P wave. Now, then we have the QRS complex. The QRS complex uh, is the second portion of this EKG radon. Now, this QRS complex here, it represents the ventricle. This ventricle here represents the QRS complex. Now, the ventricles are the lower two portions of the heart chambers. Now, these two ventricles represent the QRS complex. Any problem that is wrong with these two ventricles, this problem or those problems or that problem will be shown within the QRS complex. Now, whenever there is a problem with the P wave, meaning our atria are not working properly. Whenever there's a problem with the QRS complex, meaning our ventricles are not working properly. What you see, what happened in this case? Now, when we are having our atrial flutter, atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation, Meaning, our P wave will not be normal. So this, this, this is a normal P wave that travel from here and come down here. This is a normal P wave. Now, when we are having atrial fibrillation or atrial flood or any atrial condition, whether it is atrial, the, the, the atrium is firing faster or lower, that will affect the P wave. Now, so that's why you're going to see atrial flood or something, it will happen like this. So it appears like this on the EKG rhythm. So this elevation here will not be seen in atrial flow or atrial fibrillation. It will be like almost in this form, like in a sore tooth pattern. Now, in the sore tooth pattern, you will see that uh, the waves here are not elevated, but they are kind of like in a zigzag manner. So that becomes an atrial condition. Now, in the QRS complex, I will come to the point I will tell you how many bubbles between here. Now, whenever there is a prolongation, when there is an abnormal uh, 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 structure of the QRS complex, whenever there is an absence of the QRS complex, meaning there is a what? A ventricular problem. That becomes a ventricular problem. Now, like I said, the QRS represents the ventricle of the heart, these two chambers down here. And the T wave, now, the T wave, the T wave here, this T wave just uh, telling us that the heart is about to comp or the heart has completed a particular cycle the heart is resting so the resting stage of the heart represents the T wave now so the heart our heart be start from here so let's take a look around here we'll have the SA node which is right up here meaning blood has entered the heart blood has entered right here so when blood enter the rest of the heart meaning blood is somewhere here so when blood enters this first chamber of the heart, meaning blood is within the P wave. Now in this P wave, now then there will be impulses flowing. So the impulses in our heart flow from the P wave to the Q, to the R, to the S. Then when it reaches here to the T wave, it is resting. It is a stage in which our heart gets repolarized or the heart gets re-energized to start a new cardiac cycle. So at this point, the heart is going to what we call repolarization. Repolarization simply meaning the heart is undergoing re or is getting re-energized to start a new 
cut us out. So you will hear the first sound is it will be the love sound. And then the last sound around here, which will be the dog sound. I'm sorry. It will be somewhere around here, which, which will be the dog sound. Now, the love dog are the two sounds of the heart you hear. The love sound represents what we call the S1. So, so, the, so the love sound is the S1 sound. And the dog sound is the S2 sound right here. Now, the love sound. The heart has four vibes. The love sounds and the dog sound represent the four vibes of the heart. The heart has what we call the atrial ventricular valve. And it has what we call the sima lunar valve. Now, when you hear the love sound, this love sound is heard when the when the, when, when the two atrial ventricular valves are closing. So the love sound, which is the S1 sound, is heard at the closure of the two atrial ventricular valve. What are those two valves? Those two valves are here. You have the, the tricuspid valve here. You have the mitral valve. So the two valves here, when they are closing, for able to enter the ventricle, you will hear the first sound, which is the, 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 the love sound. That's the S1 sound. Now, we have another two valves. The other two valves are the what? The pulmonic valve somewhere around here and the aortic valve somewhere around here. Now, the pulmonic and the aortic valve, they are within the ventricle of the heart. Now, whenever you hear the dot sound, which is the S2 sound, this S2 sound is telling us that the pulmonic, uh, the pulmonic and the aortic valve are closing. So the pulmonic aortic valve closure will lead to the dot sound, which is the S2 sound. So the S1 is the first atrial ventricular valve, which is the tricuspid and the mitral valve. When you hear the first sound of the heartbeat, the love sound, that represents the closure of these two valves, the tricuspid and the, and the mitral valve. When you hear the dot sound of the heartbeat, this dot sound will give us the two closures of the uh, semilunar valve, which include the pulmonic and have the aortic valve. So this is how our normal EKG transmission occurs. This is how the impulse trans transmits from the S1 to the S2 or from the P wave to the T wave. So watch out for the next segment.